Hey guys, I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and if you're wondering why I'm zooming around in my chair, well, it's because I'm reviewing Motorola Zoom. It comes with a one... <laughs> That's a really, really, really bad joke. I'm sorry. It comes with a one gigahertz processor, uh, and it's a dual core processor. It's running NVIDIA Tegra 2 dual core processor, so it's the first tablet uh, really in the retail space, you know, to be backed by a carrier, running an awesome processor. 10.1 inch display, five megapixel camera, front facing camera, uh, and it's running Android 3.0, so it's the first retail tablet to ship with Android 3.0. And you see the uh, the five megapixel camera on the back. It has a nice weight to it. The problem, or the potential problem, is going to be price. It's $799.99 full retail, $599.99 with a two-year Verizon contract. Although supposedly the Wi-Fi version is coming to Sam's Club for $539, which puts it a little bit closer to the iPad. It's still a very expensive product. And, uh, you know, for people that are even on Verizon, $599 on contract, that's pretty expensive. Is it a tablet to have? Is the iPad the tablet to have? And, you know, you should skip all this. We're going to figure it out in the review. First, special thanks to our friends at Best Buy Mobile. They are hooking us up with two of these, but they've hooked us up with a bunch of phones and a bunch of cool stuff to give you in the One Paw Bandit game. So if you do go into Best Buy to buy this, you walk out working, they'll help you set up your email and your web and all that good stuff. Enough of that. Let's check it out in the full review. So I downloaded an application, Quadrant Standard, just to see if it would play nice with the Motorola Zoom. I don't think it's going to, but you see how it popped up in the bottom right-hand corner. and said application downloaded, and then I can click here and see successfully installed, and that's how my uh, notifications stack up. Instead of having a notifications bar that I pull down, you have your clock, your Verizon wireless, and your battery life meter, and then the notifications stack up here. So when I'm done viewing that, I just click the X, and I'm good to go. So you take a look at Twitter, for example, which, like I said, is an application that's optimized for the Motorola Zoom and Android 3.0. And you can see, you know, it works well on the 10.1 inch display. Uh, the people that I follow, the tweets are very easy to read. We'll go to uh, this tweet from Brandon, for example, and uh, Honeycomb, Speak of the Devil, and uh, Zoom, Speak of the Devil as well. But you can see, use it in portrait or in landscape mode, and very easy to see with no issues whatsoever. So, you know, they have a, quite a few apps in the, uh, the Android market that said it's not nearly to the point of the app store. So if you're a big app junkie, this may or may not be the best device for you right now. In six months, in a year, maybe, we'll see. And you know, we'll, wait, we'll hold that off for the iPad versus the Motorola Zoom dogfight, but you get the idea of what an app looks like. Let's take a look at the CNN app as well, because I think this is one of the best tablet-centric applications on the market, uh, on the Android market. At the moment, you can see CNN here, and then you can scroll up and down. Like I said, notice that box format. Just like the Android market, it seems to be the organized way to uh, to do, you know contain the flow of news, if you will, and contain the flow of new information. And uh, we're waiting for it to load up. You can see over here in the left-hand corner, you have your typical CNN stuff: world politics, money, entertainment, etc. For those that know me, they know I'm a CNN junkie. So. But uh, very clean, very organized format in my opinion. The pictures are going to load. Uh, Verizon's 3G is not, even an EVDO revision A is not the fastest in the world, uh, which is a stark contrast to their 4G, but you can see here. Um, very quick, quick to load. You can see that dual core Tegra processor, very fast. And uh, you'll notice that, oh, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. That's that the information is contained that way. Now when you click on something, for example, You'll notice the picture appears here. Kind of a shortened uh, version of the story appears, appears here in a sentence or two so you can get an idea of what's being said. And then you can scroll up and down through here. I'm sorry, and do show comments and scroll up and down that way. And then you can read the article while you're doing that. So it's this nice two, this layout of two, two column layout. So you can go up, go down, and, uh, and read and maybe look at the comments while you're reading. If somebody says, hey, look at paragraph three, you can say, oh, okay you know, go up and down and stare at paragraph three. So we're very organized and definitely optimized for the tablet platform. So on the topic of tablet optimized applications, let's take a look at the contacts because that is, there it is, contacts because it is, like I said, you know, optimized for Honeycomb and Android 3.0. So on one side, you have this very fluid uh, menu of your contacts, which you're seeing my Twitter contacts as well as my contacts on Old Man McTweety at Gmail, and then you're seeing those all over here in one place, but then you're seeing this menu here where, for example, Best Buy Mobile, scroll down and find that one, Best Buy Mobile, you'll see it'll show the tweet, it shows the uh, the little avatar, 
and we can favorite it or you know make it like one of our highlighted contacts and then you'll see a contact that I have from Old Man McTweety that I use in the videos all the time something like Billy Bob with the phone number now you can use it in portrait or in landscape mode and then you have the layout here and the information over here and then when you edit it's just optimized for the larger display and optimized for a tablet so we can add another field we can add something else like a phone number and we can keep going from there. So you can see Twitter contacts, BGR, Best Buy Mobile, Barbie, AT&T, Ashley, Ashley, etc, etc uh, are all there along with the ones from my old Mimic Tweet. You can remove uh, the Twitter contacts, you can remove individual email contacts if you want to, but just all about, you know, organizing. You can see you can organize those up here as well. So if I want to see just my Twitter feed, bam, there you go. And then I can find contacts. Uh, let's do Best Buy, for example. And it brings up John B at Best Buy and Best Buy Mobile. So you get you know, a nice search integration through most of the applications on this device. Best thing about this device, hands down, and the part where it really beats the Apple iPad, the web browser. It's basically a Chrome extension of, uh, you can see here, looks just like Chrome on the computer with the tabs up top and everything. Blows the iPad out of the water, in my opinion, in terms of overall functionality. Very fast, no lag whatsoever. I know that guy. You can see, you know, for example, this is what Google looks like, full desktop-based experience. Then you can open up tabs, as many tabs as you'd like, and surf through those. Now, I mean, I'm telling you, this dual-core processor, exceptionally fast. There's no lag on this tablet that I've experienced, at least, whatsoever. So, I mean, it's been a very speedy, uh, speedy tablet. Let's go to phone dog. Try to type, talk at the same time. Never works out for me on a video. Let's see, phonedog.com. We'll load that up, and while that's loading, I'll talk. Um, but you can see, I mean, it looks just like a desktop experience, and it's been very fast. A Tegra 2 processor chugs along, that's for sure. And then if that one's loading, want to jump over into Google, take a look, we can certainly do it. But just very fluid, very organized. You have your bookmarks up here. You can bookmark the page. Search if I want to. You can search via voice or more. Let's see, or I can get rid of that. And there's Phone Dog. Now, here's the part you're really going to be impressed with, the pinch to zoom even with flash. You can see we have the ads, we have the advertisement here. We'll jump out of that. Then you can see, whoops, sorry about that. Jump out and scroll up and down. So you can see, scrolling up and down exceptionally fast, no lag whatsoever. Now this is the kicker. Look how fast that is. I mean this is Android, which is notoriously a little bit laggy when it comes to pinch to zoom. I mean that's incredibly, incredibly fast. No lag whatsoever. Pinch to zoom, bam. Bring it in, I actually loaded a page back now, but pinch to zoom, bring it in, bring it down. You can see, and even at large fonts, still very clear and easy to read, but I can you know, bring it down, bam, bam. So just very impressed with that, and given, like I said, that it's an Android device, makes it even more impressive that the speeds are that fast. Now, yeah, as with anything else on the tablet, here's what it looks like in portrait mode. You can see that's what it looks like fully zoomed in. And even zoomed in, that's very clear text. You can see no distortion in the text whatsoever. Very clean, very easy to see. And like I said, I mean, that pinch to zoom is just exceptional in my opinion. And then you can scroll up and down with no lag whatsoever. Let's take a look at one other website, ESPN.com. We'll see what it looks like. And you'll notice one thing that I criticize Android for that is in Honeycomb, those transition effects. Notice how I turn it, very fluid, with those nice little transition effects, just like the, uh, just like the iPhone and iOS have. You can see definite improvements there. And this is what ESPN looks like. Again, very quick. Pinch to zoom is very fast. Little to no lag whatsoever. Let's have a look at the cameras on, on the, both of the cameras actually on this device. Let's load up the camera and you'll see the rear facing camera and we'll plot something like the T-Mobile G2 for you to take a look at. Now it's 5 megapixel camera, picture quality is honestly not the best in the world by any means but we can click here, focus in and once it's focused let go and go from there. So you can see some graininess in between the keys focus isn't that great and honestly it's a tablet who's gonna hold it up like this and take pictures. You can see all the stuff I use to hold the cloth down there but you know let's say bring it in there's some zoom in there, and I mean, it looks pretty decent, but who's going to hold a tablet up like that? I mean, I can see more use for the front-facing camera than I can for the rear. Now, we can flip it around, and you can see me. What's going on, guys? And uh, we'll zoom in, or not zoom in, but we'll take the picture there. That's a good-looking picture. Have a look at that one. 
You see my facial expression there, but you can see 5 megapixel camera, pictures are decent. Front facing camera is not going to be anything to write home about, but it, uh, too many pictures of myself, like too many cameras going on here. But, uh, you know, it's certainly good for video calling and things like that. Let's take a look at speed test. We'll run it on the Charlotte server to get an idea of what to expect with Verizon's 3G speeds. Let's see settings, make sure that it pulls up. And uh, you can see, like, for example, this is not optimized for the tablet, so. It's not a okay, current server, Charlotte. It's not optimized for the tablet, so it looks a little bit out of place, but you can see a roundabout idea of what to expect from Verizon's 3G speeds. They're not very fast. I mean, Verizon's 3G network is clearly very taxed. And you really, you know, you see it on devices like the Motorola Zoom and some of their 3G smartphones. The Apple iPhone 4, definitely taxed 437 kilobits per second. On the upload, about 800 kilobits per second. I've been averaging between 500 kilobits per second and two megabits per second, depending on the time of the day. So something to keep in mind, maybe your area is a little bit faster, but that's the average that I've seen both here, when I've tested it in San Francisco, Atlanta, several other metro areas as well. So something to keep in mind, it's not the fastest in the world, but it is pretty you know, reasonably reliable and their actual coverage footprint is, uh, is very wide. All in all, I've been exceptionally pleased with the Motorola Zoom, best by far Android tablet to date, runs circles around the Samsung Galaxy Tab. And the reason why is because it was running Android 2.2. It's just not a tablet optimized operating system. Honeycomb clearly is to me. I don't understand what the reviewers are saying when they say it's not, you know, refined around the edges. I think it's a very, a very good attempt. And, uh, you know, it's definitely a tablet competitor against WebOS, against iOS. Definitely a strong contender in the market. It's fast, it works well, I've had no major issues with it. The browser, absolutely phenomenal with the tab configuration and the kind of PC-like look to it. You know, I don't think you can go wrong with this tablet. The problem is the price point. $799.99 full retail, $599 on contract, unless the Wi-Fi-less version is really $539 or, you know, at max $599 off contract, like Motorola CEO Sanjay Jha said uh, in, a, in a press conference you know, then it's going to have a hard time competing with the iPad because price point, you know, it's everything or it's almost everything in a lot of cases with consumers. That said, fantastic tablet. We'll just wait and see what the price point is. Much more to come on phonedog.com. Keep it locked on the site. We're giving away a bunch of stuff on Facebook, so be sure to like us on Facebook. You know where we're going to pull it up? Facebook.com slash phonedog. So be sure to like us there. We're giving away some exciting things, like I said. And, uh, you know, we're on there a lot, so be sure to check us out. Be sure to follow me on Twitter as well, phone dog underscore Aaron. You know, I tweet a lot. I'm a pretty cool guy. I'm fun to be around. Like I said, this is the place to be. Phonedog.com on Facebook, phone dog underscore Aaron on Twitter. Hey, I mean, if you have those down, you can't go wrong. Thanks so much for watching. It's Friday, so have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time.